Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. We are still here in Twine and still trying to convince Magnus over there to help us with the Talos so can we can use the trolleys um, to reach Nabafa Rang and boom. <laughs> Rather complicated mess here. Why must he always treat me like this? Yeah, it was Fenquit who just tried to convince Magnus but seemed to have failed. I wish there was more we could do for you, I truly do. But after Agnes and accident, no one is allowed near those mines. Full well do I know the pain of loss and how heavily it can weigh on one's heart. Nevertheless, there is but one way forward. We must need to procure a newer heart for the Talos. Tafe, know us for any location wherein we might find the stone we require. No matter how scant the possibility, we would seize it. I told you near all the veins were tapped to her years ago. Well, I suppose if you really wanted to try, you may find something at Nuvi's leavings. It was open before Talos became commonplace, which is why the mining there was never quite as deep. When you get there, look for good John and tell him I sent you, but don't be surprised if he tells you the same thing. Divine assistance is most appreciated. So anyway, I think it best Fank would join me in this search. Though he would be quick to deny it, his heart is in turmoil and his thoughts clouded. It would be unwise to ignore his distress. Off to somewhere, are you? At last, a lead on the stone we need to power the Talos. I can't very well have you go on your own. Lead the way. I'd say we are long overdue for a good turn. I can only hope the gods feel the same way. Now, Nubi's leavings was to the south, was it? Let's get going. Sorry, sometimes the mood strikes me to do a fate. The way you described it, I was expecting the place to be abandoned. Perhaps our fortunes are finally improving. Oh, we should probably hear what Githron has to say before we celebrate. Assuming we can find him, that is. Who are you? What are you doing here? We hope to find stones from Talos Hut. Well, you should have listened to Tafe. You're wasting your time. But this site is not as developed as the others, is it not? Surely there must be something left. I should explain. The stone you're looking for is Leonine. All the Talos in the hills of Ember are powered using them. Or where, at least. Anyway, whatever is left, if anything, is too far below to be safely excavated. In the deepest reaches of a mine, we used Talos to keep the pathways from collapsing. They're still there, but they could give out at any time, which is why much of the mine is closed off. And our only option is to search for higher levels for any fragments of Leonine that may have been overlooked. <laughs> I suppose there may be one other way. Well, don't leave us in suspense. What you're asking is for a trade secret. I need to be duly compensated in exchange. Ah, fine. What do you want? The other day I found a verbot gold piece down in the mines. A bloody verbot gold piece. And wouldn't you know it, I dropped the damn thing somewhere while I was working. Find it and I'll tell you what you want to know. You have a hard bargain, but we'll take it. It seems we have our work cut out for us, Sylvania. Thankfully, I have an idea of how we might hurry things along. Uh, 
as I'm sure you noticed, despite her best efforts to illuminate the corridors, it's rather dark in here, meaning it will be that much harder to find a single coin hiding in the shadows. That's why I propose we use these sun drops. They help the eye take in more light. Why don't you start your search further in and I handle this area here? I retrace the steps after in case you happen to miss it. If you feel the drops effects wearing off, I can give you more, so don't worry. Nothing. Nothing. And here the mine is closed off because something could happen. As you search for shadows, a glint catches your eye. You turn over a rock and find the rubber gold piece. I was hoping he'd drop the gold piece somewhere closer to the entrance. More fool me for thinking Lady Luck was an hour, right? Or maybe she is. Yours at least. Uh, in the end, my contribution was a little more than poor company. Come now, Fancrit, you are far more prepared for this task than I. No more than usual, I assure you. I only managed to survive a cough and wilderness in the Imperial capital by virtue of extensive preparation, a habit of mine since childhood, and one of my few positive traits which endeared me to Louis Soir, I imagined. It hasn't been easy finding ways to compensate for my um, condition. Every tool and trinket has proven vital to my continued success such as it is. If I chose to pursue the arcane arts rather than espionage, well, uh, I'd rather not think on it. So long as I have the means to protect those dear to me and to see my duties through, that's all that matters. Now let's hurry and see that returned to good John. The sooner we get back to Yanjim and Philia, the better. You're back? Wait, does that mean... Be damned, you actually found it. Well, a deal is a deal, but don't think this means you find what you're after. To be honest, I wasn't sure you could pull it off, but you did, and I'm a man of my word. Come with me. I hope you waited for the sun drops to wear off. They work wonders in the dark, but in the light of day, they only bring you pain. <sighs> Every time I step out of those mines, the sky seems to get brighter. I'd never leave them if the air went so stale. But you're not come to hear my grievances. You're after Leonin. First I have to ask, you ever heard of rockworms? Rockworms, I know them by another name, though I'm fairly certain the locals call them knockers. I bet they do. Whatever you want to call them, those little bastards may be the answer to your troubles. They can fit through cracks and crevices down where we could never hope to reach. And on occasion, they come back with something valuable. They dig up Leonine in the mines? It's a rare occurrence, but yes. That said, it usually amounts to no more than a few flas flakes. Well, our only other option sounds tantamount to suicide, so how can we draw out these rockworms? Over by the check, you find a bag full of smoke bombs. Set off a few in the mines and you flush them out in no time. Once they're out in the open, knock them senseless and check their backs. I should warn you, this method of mining, if you even can call it that, is used as a last resort on account of what little there's like to bring back. 
You want to cover as much ground as you can if you hope to find anything of value. Assuming you do find something, bring it here and I have a look. We should split up if we had to cover more ground as he suggests. If you can cover these three areas on your map, I'll see the parts between them. The ember mines grows thick with smoke. Nearby you hear the soft rumbling of stones. That took a while. I thought my share, fair share of works. Hopefully, there's Leonine among them. There you are. Find anything promising? Between the two of you, I'd say you got quite the haul. Let's get comfortable, friends. It's going to take time for me to sift through all this. You may not remember this about Arminfilia. But prior to founding the Path of the Twelve, long before the Scions, she was something of a miner. Right, she did mention that. After her father died, Flamine took her in and taught her the trade. I think they were both seeking to fill the void left by a loved one. Maybe that's why she took to it so readily. Back in those days, I spent most of my time in the quicksand, or some other tavern, loosening tongues and gathering secrets. Occasionally, I'd catch a glimpse of her in the street, on her way home after another hard day's work. I always felt a wave of relief when I saw she'd come back safe. Along with a pang of guilt at the fact I wasn't there to support her as I should have been. Simply speaking with her more than once in a blue moon would have been a good start. But I could never bring myself to do it. Instead, I threw myself into my work, and became every drunkard's best friend. Not your finest hour to say the least? Far from it, and Flamine has never let me live it down. But that was a lifetime ago. Here and now, I have another chance to do things right. And I will not squander it again. Hey! Come and see what I found! <laughs> You're not going to believe this! Tell me it's Leonine. It is at that. You lot were born lucky. It's mostly broken pieces. But look at this.
This is a rather fine specimen. It's been decades since we found anything approaching this big. But that's not all. There's an engraving on it. Ah, these scratches here. They're a little hard to make out. To my beloved Magnus and Schooley. Yes! Do you see? It was a gift to Magnus from his wife. She found it. She really found it. She must have spent her final hours carving this message into the stone, in the hope that he might see it one day. Those rock-backed bastards must have made off with it before we could clear a path to her. It's fate that brought you here to find this stone. No other explanation. It makes me wonder what else might still be buried in these parts. that a good message to bring him? I had hoped we would find Leonin, but to find this that particular specimen is nothing short of a miracle. I wouldn't believe it had I not seen it for myself. Before you set it on the Talos, would you take it to Magnus? For three long years he believed she died for nothing. He must know the truth. But her sacrifice was not in vain. We'll take it straight to him. You have my word. But thank you, Gudrun, for all your help. Well then, let's not keep everyone waiting. What? Oh, it's you. You've come to complain about the troll, you find no sympathy from me. I told you before it won't run and you wouldn't listen. Oh, but it will. Now that you have this. Your name's engraved on it, along with your son's. It was a gift from your wife, Magnus. From Agnam. No, she couldn't have. Agna. Take it. Do with it, with it what you will. Are you certain? It would delay our plans, but... I said take it. It was you who found it. You who needs it. Look at that stone. All I can see is... Yes. Please, just leave me be. I hope you'll be there when the Talos stirs to life. I'm sure she'd want you to see it. Would you do the honors of delivering this to you, Rianji? You found Leonin? Truly? Then what are you waiting for? Let's get the trolley moving. You what? By the gods, I didn't think it possible. 
Sorry, I couldn't be of more help. But the sounds of it, you have a knack for handling strange requests. On the bright side, Yuanji taught me a lot about the talents in their hearts. I think I can help if I need further repairs. Finally, we can move on to Nabafa Wang. Assuming this works, of course. Thou art returned of re with Leonin, it would seem. As promised, the Talos has been made ready to receive its heart, thanks in no small part to Jarek, Tathe, and Minfilia. At last, we shall return time to the timeless, the Sentinel of Stone, if you may press on toward Nabar Farang. Very good. Now let us begin. Preparations for the enchantment are complete. When the heart have been suffused with a sufficient quantity of ether, the golem should be restored to life. All right then. Whenever you're ready. It's working! It's working! M Magnus! This? This wretched heap of stone and rubble? This worthless pile of earth? And yet... I can't... I can't... What troubleth thee, child? I shouldn't be here. I don't deserve to be. I don't deserve any of the things you've done for me. I'm just a burden. Helpless and hopeless. If tomorrow came and I was gone, it would be better for everyone. Thank Red most of all. He'll never admit it, but I can see it in his eyes. I wish he'd just say it. Just say that he hates me. That he wishes I was dead so that she could return. None of this is thy doing, child. Twas I who set the oracle on her path unto the first. I who condemned you all to suffer these torments. Tis my sin alone. And one that will haunt me unto my dying day. Yet I dare not dwell over long on my many regrets, for the world is a tapestry of fates, interwoven and inseparable. 
and we who strive to better it cannot choose but make difficult decisions. For naught of worth was ever achieved without sacrifice. And thus must man ever struggle to weigh life against loss. The one for whom thou mournest beareth no grudge. Were she here, she would not suffer thee to languish in sorrow. She would tell thee to seek thine own path, thine own purpose. It is a truth which I myself was slow to learn, yet a truth it remaineth. Thou needst but have faith, have faith, and all will be well. Not today. Meanwhile, in the Crystarium. To what do I owe the pleasure that is your extended stay? Oh, to the tediousness of our hero's present endeavors. That and the insufferable abundance of light in Armoreng. I should be glad to keep my distance. Oh, I'm rather fond of sleep, you know. It's a wonderful way to pass the time. Not that my compeers will agree, mind you. Always on the move, the lot of them. Like La Habrea, constantly jumping from vessel to vessel. Such fire, such determination. So much passion, fleeting and forgotten. Come to think of it, Exarch, I don't believe I've ever seen you retire to your chambers for so much as 40 winks. However do you keep your eyes from closing? The cold shoulder. You wound me, sir. Always so guarded in our every interaction. Interactions you curiously refrain from sharing with the Scions and their champion. And risk souring your budding relationship? I think not. Much as I dislike you, there are more useful targets for her energies. And I am not in the habit of pointing her at my enemies like a weapon. Is that right? Fond of her, are you? You continue to fascinate me, Exarch. But tell me, who are you? The once great nation whose ingenuity gave birth to this tower was shaped by my hand. As such, I know full well the wonders it can facilitate and those it cannot. There is nothing in these walls which could have aided you in summoning our dear friend across time and space. Much less in possession of her mortal flesh, not even I could have performed such a feat. 
I see. You had a hand in Alag as well. You would know what I am? I am the adjudicator of the sacred history with which you dared trifle. I am keeper of this tower's boundless wisdom. The wisdom of ages without age, of everywhere and nowhere. The great work of those who tamed the wings of time and grasped the nature of the rift. Tis a boon born of the sacrifice of brave heroes who gave their lives for a brighter future. I will not see their hopes and dreams squandered. The history which led us here will be unwritten. I promise you that. Well, it seems we are both eager to fulfill our duties then. On that much, we are in agreement. My apologies for the delay. Milfilia and I had a, a private matter to discuss. Which brings me to the question. Did Thor find Fancrit doing your search? He spoke of Milfilia. Of his own accord? I see. It is well that he did, and with such candor. I attempted to broach the subject before. My intention was to ensure no words remained unspoken between them less tragedy and deceit. A regret I myself know all too well. Alas, in the end, he refused to heed my counsel. A time will come when they must face the reality of their circumstances, but I have faith that all will be well in time. Now, let us not tarry any longer. The Talos and Nabatha Rang await. And with that, I end this episode. Until next time, when we hopefully finally travel with Atalus and Mace and don't get lost.